Good morning, Rex. What was that? Good morning, reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. On this animal spotlight, no, we are not talking about predator. We are talking about the toad-headed agama. Thank you so much to Audible Reptiles for this video suggestion. I honestly knew absolutely nothing about these guys until I started researching for this video and I learned so much. So thank you so much. This was an awesome suggestion. So first of all, there are actually over 40 different species of this lizard, which is crazy. So we're just going to be focusing on the secret toad-headed agama or the secret toad-headed agama, the frilled toad-headed agama, or Phrynocephalus, Phrynocephalus. Mustaceous? I don't know. Right here. The secret toad-headed agama is a small terrestrial lizard that inhabits sandhill deserts in southeastern Europe all the way to western China. So they have a giant range. Right off the bat, these guys stay very true to their names. Their body very much resembles a bearded dragon's, but then their heads look like toad heads. They look super, super cute, but as soon as they become agitated or defensive, they open up these pink flaps on the sides of their faces to make their heads look bigger to fight off threats. This move may look familiar to you because it's a lot like what the frilled dragon does. And that is the secret in the name because they're going to flare those out to fend off their natural predators like other lizards and even snakes. They also have black tip tails. So during all this frilling and showing that they're scary creatures, they're also gonna take that tail and curl it up behind them, much like a scorpion, and accompany all that with a hiss. These guys are gonna stay fairly small, only getting up to about 10 inches, and they have greatly adapted to living on sand. The amount of adaptions that they have to live in that environment was one of the things that completely blew me away. First thing, they have no external ear opening. So if you look at a bearded dragon or almost any other lizard, they're going to have holes right up next to their neck and that's their ear canals. These guys don't have that so that sand can't get into them. They're also going to have little fringes around their eyes to keep sand from getting into their eyes. And they have giant feet and these feet are going to help them to run across the sand. I don't know if you have ever run across the sand, but it is not easy. These guys have specially adapted fringes and super long toes to help them get across that desert. Now one of the coolest things that I found when researching these guys is the way that they dig into the sand. They are burrowers and instead of the traditional way that you would think about an animal digging, these guys are going to use both limbs on the same side to dig at once and when they burrow into the sand it almost looks like they're disappearing into quicksand. I was able to find a video of them doing this and I will have the original video link in the description, but here's a clip of that awesomeness. So they're going to stay burrowed into that sand during the hottest parts of the day and sometimes they'll even burrow in there at night to sleep. So that leads me to my next point. Coming in shades of browns and grays, these guys are going to burrow themselves into that sand and blend in and it makes the perfect hunting ground for bugs. These are what you would call sit and wait hunters or ambush hunters. That being said, these guys are going to eat bugs in the wild. These guys are primarily insectivores. These guys are also an egg laying species. So in one clutch, they'll lay about one to six eggs. On to keeping these guys in captivity. These guys are not a very popular pet being relatively new to the pet trade. And like I said before, I knew absolutely nothing of these guys before researching this video. So this is 1000% not a care guide. If you are going to get one of these, please do a lot of research other than this video, research, 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 and prepare 
for this animal accordingly. Their care seems to be pretty straightforward and simple, but I will say that finding one of these guys seems to be pretty difficult and finding care guides for these guys seems to be pretty difficult. Usually my go-to is reptile magazines. They in themselves usually have multiple articles on these animals and I couldn't even find one on these guys. So that should tell you that they're not all that easy to find. That being said, if you get one of these, you're not gonna have an insane amount of help on caring for them on the internet. By this, I just mean when compared to other beginner reptiles like bearded dragons, ball pythons, and leopard geckos. Even looking at YouTube videos, I couldn't find very many on these other than the one that was in Russian that I showed before. What that means for you is that if your animal gets sick and you go to an exotic vet, there's a huge possibility that they've never seen any of those before. So keep all that in mind if you are gonna get this animal. These guys are relatively small, but super active in captivity. So their minimum requirement is gonna be a 20 gallon long, but feel free to go bigger than that because they will use the space that you give them. These guys are from the desert. So that means that they like it hot. They're gonna need a basking spot of around 105 to 110. And I even found articles saying that they need it hotter than that. They're also gonna need an ambient temperature gradient of 86 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. They can tolerate a little bit of a drop, it seems at night at about seven 70 degrees, but otherwise they like it hot. So to maintain that temperature, you're gonna need a heat pad and a basking light. And if you live in a colder climate, you may also even need a ceramic heat emitter to keep that temperature up. In addition, they are diurnal desert creatures, which means that they are gonna need copious amounts of UV lighting. That means that you're gonna want a UV tube light on top of that tank. Like I said before, they are insectivores. So they're gonna eat crickets and mealworms and the beetles that come off mealworms, which not a lot of animals will eat them and these guys will and they'll also eat doobie roaches and various other beetles and worms i also found a video of them hunting and on land they hunt a lot like baby bearded dragons but i found a really cool video of them ambushing their bugs from the sand so let's watch that one too That is the coolest thing to me. And if you notice in that video, they are keeping that toad head agama on sand. Like I said previously, these guys are highly adapted to live on sand in the sandy desert. So in these guys' tank, you're gonna need four to six inches of sand. Everywhere that I was reading, highly recommended just normal play sand. You can watch them burrow and dig and hunt from the sand, which is so, so, so cool. And just to make it a little bit easier for them to burrow, it's recommended that you keep about half of the tank sand a little bit damp. As you know, sand clumps when it's damp, so that just helps them to burrow into it a little bit. But you're definitely not keeping that sand wet because they are from the desert. And that is about it on these guys. Like I said, I learned so much while researching these guys. I kind of want one now, but I'll just have to add that to my other giant list of all the reptiles that I want. I absolutely love the way that they flap their faces out. I think it was the cutest thing, but that might just be me. I don't know. What do you guys think? But that is all for this. This week if you enjoyed this video i have an entire playlist of animal spotlights where you can learn about even more reptiles and if you want to see even more pictures of my animals throughout the week you can head on over to instagram and follow me there at l.62 where you can do just that so i have quite a few instagram shout outs to give this week my phone was going crazy all this week so thank you guys you're awesome so thank you so much to brandon bull one like knives dragons can't fly so sad that is the best name Southern Slumman, Classy Colubrids, Cole Bear's Cave, and Araman Shakir. Sorry if I said that wrong. Thank you guys so much for following me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of my pictures. You guys are the bee's knees. If you like this video, please feel free to like this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. I put out new videos every single Sunday and new vlogs every single Wednesday. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Thank you so much to Wild Boar Reptiles. And I learned so much and oh, as soon as they become agitated or defensive, they, they frill out this crazy flaps. They become agitated or mm -hmm. they fan out these flaps, pink flaps, pink flaps, pink flaps, pink flaps, deep within the sand, which is as or also found a video of them hunting. 
also found a video of them hunting. Inches of sand. One thing about Predator is he has this little red laser. And if you put the little red laser on your head and you're like, just, just for fun, I mean. Wait, you want me to look up? Yeah, like look up like, and it'll look kind of scary. <laughs> 